And what you're doing is you're desensitizing both the cats to the puppy and the puppy to the cats. Are you ready for another dog vlog? Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how uh, not to have him <laughs> chew on my pants. No, today I'm gonna show you how I got this puppy to get along with my mom's cats and how we introduced Wally when we first brought him home at eight weeks old to my mom's older and finicky and not so dog tolerant cats and three lifesavers that literally were game changers that I rarely hear people talk about. So let's jump into this video, right to meow. Okay, let's see if I can do this with a crazy energetic puppy. Why am I doing this in the afternoon right after his nap, right before he needs his meal? I don't know. I'm just, you know, I wanna be real with you guys. This is just a crazy little land shark. So for step one, guys, we set up safe spaces for my mom's two cats. She has one cat, her name is Ever, she's about six years old, and she's pretty okay with dogs, but she still has her limits. Her other cat, though, is named Black Cat, original I know. She's probably closer to 10 or 11 years old, and she is terrified of dogs. She's just a really skittish cat. But as many of you know, my mom is a fairly recent widow, so she recently got Wally, who's, I guess, technically my brother. So I really wanted to take these steps slowly and do it right, just to ensure long-term success. I'm telling you, it worked really well. We set up three safe spaces in my mom's house, and we set them up strategically. We barricaded the areas in her home in three sections where she spends most of her time. The first section was the back office area. That's where her office is, and because <laughs> of... Uh, uh, what's going on in the world she's working remotely now so she has that area then she has the front entryway and kitchen and dining room area and then the other section is the living room and her bedroom this way there are at least two spaces three spaces where the cats could always get to that the and escape to and still feel like they have access to their home but the puppy can't get to them and i'll talk about more what this looks like and why this is important in just a moment and what was interesting about mom's house is it's very interestingly laid out <laughs> it's probably not the best way to say that but she has some really wide entryways. So we had to get creative because baby gates, traditional baby gates wouldn't fit in the wider areas. And she wanted something that looked good in her home and also was durable and would last and not too, too expensive. So we found, actually she found this playpen that has little stands so it can stand up on its own vertically and flat so that way it could go across her main entry area in the front and i'll be sure to link everything i talk about down below the best that i can and, and find these things and then the other really awesome thing that she has is what they call a door buddy you guys if you've been following following me for a while you know that i am obsessed with these i found these all on my own uh, probably a year year and a half ago and it's basically a child lock safety system that works excellently well for keeping dogs away from cat areas and cats giving cats a safe space. So places where she didn't want to have to walk over a baby gate like her bedroom door, but she still wanted to give them a safe spot, she used these door buddies. I do have special links for you linked down below, so definitely go check them out. And before we go into step two, I want to give you two more pro tips that have to do with step one, which is giving you so many tips in the first step, but I'm here to give you value and I want to give it all away as much as I can. For the first pro tip, we set up the baby gates, the door buddies, the crates weeks before Wally ever came home. So the cats got adjusted to walking through the baby gates, through the little cat section of the baby gates, jumping over them, walking around them. So they weren't new while a new puppy was in. That was a huge lifesaver for us. And we did use the baby gates that had the little cutout where you had a little door for the cats to go through. Pro tip two is actually after puppy comes home and what we would do is swap safe spaces so let's say my mom was in her back office working with Wally uh, she had Wally in the playpen she was doing her computer work the cats would have the two other safe spaces to roam freely be able to smell him and get more comfortable with him and then when she got out of the office and let's say she came to her bedroom to kind of get ready for bed at night she would put her two cats in the other two safe spaces so they could actually go and roam and smell each other it was just a really quick and easy way for them to get used to each other without having that face-to-face -face interaction. Now let's jump into step two. Puppy comes home, what do you do next? So what we did was we locked my mom's two cats, locked sounds so harsh, but we did, in my mom's bedroom. That's where they sleep every night. That's their safe space. We took a spare litter box. We put it in my mom's bathroom because she has an attached bathroom. We put a scratching post, water, food, their cat beds, some toys, everything in the room, everything that they would need to survive in the room and lock them in. When we brought puppy home, like literally the first moment we walked in that door, the cats were already locked away in the back room. Keep it, and now keep in mind, baby gates were already set up before the puppy came home. The door buddy was set up. The crate was already set up. That is not a toy. Here, pop up not a toy and then we brought puppy home and we started working on step three which is basic obedience from day one and this really matters and this is what really was a game changer uh excuse me that's like quite rude <gasps> look 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 
and we kept my mom's cats contained in her room for about three to five days, which I know sounds long, yes, good boy, but they were more than content to stay in there anyways, and it just made them feel extremely safe. Now, my mom did have some dedicated time, obviously, a couple times throughout the day, in the evening, where she'd put the puppy in her crate. If you wanna know what we use for a crate and what we recommend, you can click the video up here or the special links down below. We use and love Diggs Working crate. with Wally big time on basic obedience commands, specifically the T-O-U-C-H command. I'll show you how to do that uh, at the end of the video. And what that is, is basically you say T-O-U-C-H and the dog comes running and puts their nose to your hand. And that is really helpful because if the puppy is running and chasing after the cat, when they do finally meet, you wanna be able to pull them away without always having to yank them away. And so this is a good way to redirect them and then positively reward them when they're not chasing the cat inappropriately. And yes, I'm talking about day one. Free, you can free if you wanna get off. I'm talking about day one. Yes, a lot of people will say, oh, my puppy's only eight, nine weeks old, they can't work with them, absolutely. Within the first day of bringing Wally home, we're working on basic sits and downs, and this is important because then you start to teach the puppy to listen to you, and you're only gonna be using positive reinforcement, you're only going to be doing this training in very short intervals. I have tons of videos linked down below on how to do those, and this starts to get the puppy to focus on you. So that, so that when they finally meet face to face and the puppy is getting all excited, they're more inclined to look at you. So that's why it's important, in my opinion, to keep them completely separate in the beginning and to work with that puppy like no other. Play with that puppy, bond with that puppy, start to build that trust. Yes, good job, Wallace, you're so good. You're so good. And then you wanna switch time with each of them. So what we would do is we start crate training from day one. And so we would leave the puppy in his crate while he was taking a nap, because puppies can nap up to 18, 20 hours a day. Once he fell asleep, we would gently put him in his crate, sleep in there, shut the door so he'd get used to that. And then we'd go spend one-on-one -on -one time with my mom's cats. That way they could smell each other, because then when the puppy woke up, we came out, took him to potty, and then played with the puppy. The puppy would smell the cats on us, the cats would smell the puppy, on us as well and it would be back and forth and it was a way to for them to meet without actually meeting and of course they can smell each other they can hear each other through the door they have great heightened senses unlike you and i as humans so this all again is part of the introduction process and it may seem like you're doing very little but slow and steady wins the race if you find that your puppy has a high prey drive like they're really going after little toys and they want to rip them up and shred them up you may want to wait to do the introduction a little bit longer or if your cat is maybe a little bit more skittish than others. Now it is for the fun part. This is when they get to actually meet. And so after I felt comfortable that the puppy was really responding to the T-O-U-C-H command, let's try it. Wallace, can you touch? Yes, good job! Yeah, here you go! Good job, good boy! So after you feel really confident with that, which he learned that in like two days, and it's still not perfect, but he still, he loves it. After you feel like you've worked with them, after you feel like your cats have maybe calmed down a little bit, everybody's kind of just relaxed, the excitement of the new puppy has just chilled a little bit. Then, with the baby gate between the doorways, I open up the door this much, not all the way. And I don't let the cats just run out or the puppy run out. That's not at all setting up either of them for success. Even if you think they're gonna be okay, I personally, it's just not worth having that first impression be negative. So I open the door just a crack. And if the cats wanna come up to the baby gate between the crack and look out and, and whatnot, then great. Or you can use the door buddy and you can extend or shorten the length of the door buddy to where the door can open only open just a little bit. And that way the cat can poke his or her head out and the puppy can poke his or her head in, but there's really no face-to-face -face touching interaction and they can't fully see each other quite yet, but they can really smell each other through the open bit. And then over several days, I'll open it a little bit more. Again, over several days, maybe even weeks, depending on your dog and your cat. In this scenario, I also make sure that the puppy is not obsessively going after the doorway. If your puppy, even with the door is shut, is obsessively going after that doorway, seems completely fixated on the cats on the other end, I, to me, too soon, too soon to move on to the next step. So what I do is work on the T-O-U-C-H command. I work on playing with the puppy. I work on getting the puppy interested in other things than being obsessed with the cat because if they're obsessed with the cat when the door is shut or the door is cracked and they really wanna to get to it, you may, not always, but you may have issues with the dogs having a little bit more prey drive, playing with the cat too rough. And maybe in some situations that won't happen, but to me, again, it's just not worth the risk. So I just start back at step one and again, go back on ABCs, working on these basic obedience 
training. And what you're doing is you're really working on the dog to pay attention to you. And another thing you can do if they're really just interested in that door, maybe it's a little bit older of a puppy, is you could put a harness on the puppy and work on leash and heel commands and rewarding big time with high value treats anytime they come back to you when you walk by that door. So you can take little walks inside your home. Going on a walk doesn't always have to be outside and you can take walks through your living room, past the door where the cats are, and anytime that puppy is looking at you, jackpot that. You can jackpot that with a high value treat. Some of my favorite treats are uh, green lamb tripe by Canine Natural, basically a single ingredient, uh, high protein treat with no fillers, no grains, nothing like that. And I just jackpot like one, two, three, four, five on the treats. I even use toys. It doesn't always have to be treats. And that way they're really learning, okay, the door is interesting, but mom or dad, is way more interesting, much more value to pay attention to them than, what, than what's on the other door. And what you're doing is you're desensitizing both the cats to the puppy and the puppy to the cat. And then over the next several days, maybe even a couple of weeks, I slowly ex increase the opening of that door. And a lot of times I'll recommend just to keep that baby gate there so that it's not easy for the cat or the dog to get there. That way, if you don't pay attention for two seconds, there's no issues. And when I knew it was okay to open that door all the way and really allow them to see each other without having much of a barricade between them other than a baby gate was when I was able to get his attention right when we were near it. So the door would be open just a few inches and if I could get his attention to recall away from it, get his attention to play, he'd go nap in the corner, just wasn't fixated on it. That is when I knew, okay, we could open the door all the way and then all they had between them was a baby gate. And then from there, I just gradually allowed the cats to make the next move. I never put the cats in a situation like, okay, here's a cat, here's a dog, good luck. To me, it's just, just too much of a risk of something wrong happening. And again, that first impression really counts. Good boy! You went on the mat, good job. And so we had the baby gate open and I put a little box on either side so the cat could jump up and then out or we use the door buddy. And then I allowed the cat in their own time to come out and play and watch. And what I do is I'd make sure the puppy was on his harness and leash so that if he tried to run after them, sometimes that, that high drive would take over their ability to remember to recall and that way it could keep them safe. But the cat always had an easy way to retreat to a safe space. The cat could always go back to my mom's room because the baby gate was there and the puppy couldn't get to them. So if they felt threatened, they could run away. And I let the cats decide how quickly they wanted to meet Wally and come out into the main space wherever we were. And this for my mom's cat ever, the one who's more okay with cats took uh, not even a week, like very quickly she was ready to go and she's like one of the dogs. My other mom's cat, Black Cat, is still not in love with the idea of Wally, but check this out. Wally has barely been here for a month, maybe a month and a half, and my mom's cat, Black Cat, is right up here. I'm actually in my mom's bedroom. This is where we're filming this and look how good he's doing. Here's my mom's cat ever. She's a good girl and she's totally fine with him. But you can see Wally's right here and she just doesn't care at all. Now, if Wally were to be on the bed, she'd probably run away. But look at this. She had a brain injury, which is why her eye looks the way that it does. I don't know if you can see that. Come here. Can I see? There it is. So you can see her eye looks a little off. She had a brain injury, so her uh, ability to handle stress is low and she's very, very skittish. But look at this, like if you knew her, you would be shocked that they're like this close to each other with no issues. Hi, baby. And throughout this entire process, it's really important that you continue to work with your puppy on things like T-O-U-C-H. Wally, Papa, can you <gasps> touch? Yes, good job. And the way that you teach that is you just hold. Okay, can you sit? Ah, 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 ah. There we go. Okay, you just hold your hand. I'm gonna show you here in front of their nose. And as soon as they, without saying anything, yes, good boy. As soon as their nose touches it. Yes, good job. Can you guys see that? I'm like, yes, good job. As soon as their nose touches it, which puppies do this pretty quick. I reward with my marker word Y-E-S, which is telling him, hey, that's what I want you to do. If you wanna learn how to do that, click the video linked up here or in the description down below. And then I just keep doing that over and over and over again. And oftentimes when I'm saying Y-E-S, I'm also following that at the exact same time, the moment their nose is touching my hand with a high value treat and or a toy or sometimes just verbal praise. And again, what that does is that he's like, okay, every time my nose goes to her hand, that's exciting. 
after a couple of days of practicing this, then I'll put a command to it. And again, this is so important because if you try to, if your puppy's going after the cat and let's say they're playing a little too hard and you just yank them off or you pull their leash away, sometimes it can make them wanna go after the cat more. And so what I like to do is redirect. And I redirect with trying to get their attention. I don't, avo I avoid saying their name because I feel like we, I, I do the same thing use their name so much it starts just losing its value so i'll say puppy 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 come on this way or i ask for the t-o-u-c-h command and guys if your puppy comes to your hand while playing with a cat which usually is really exciting and really tempting you better reward that big time i would this would be one time i'm like please have a high value treat if your dog is food motivated because that's huge but if you practice this a lot throughout the first day for several days first months this will become so easy and so intuitive for your pup. now for a couple pro tips first off make sure that before you do any practice sessions with the puppy and the cat that your puppy has had plenty of mental and physical stimulation. I have plenty of videos linked down below on how to do that. Not just physical stimulation, but you need to work their mind. You can do brain games, you can do a light game of light fetch, but you wanna make sure that they have their kind of exerted energy out. You also want to praise big time anytime your puppy pays any amount of attention, even if it's just kind of a glance at the cat and then looks at you. That, I'm talking, we mark that heavy with a Y-E-S good job, yay, bop, 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 and give treats and praise, and yeah, see, he's like, oh, what did I do? That is huge, like you want to praise them anytime they do what you want them to do. That's how dogs and puppies learn, for the most part, is by rewarding them on the behavior that you want them to do, and not allowing the behavior that you don't want them to do. They don't learn by saying no, they don't learn by yelling or punishing them, that doesn't teach them anything, but if they do something, especially on their own will, especially on their own will, and you reward that, you reinforce that with something of value to them, treats, tr toys, praise, you better believe they're gonna learn quickly. And it's really important for you to pay attention. Pay attention to their body language if they're starting to kind of crawl towards the cat or they're playing too roughly. Yes, you need to intervene. At the end of the day, most times, a cat is more at risk of getting hurt by a puppy and a dog than vice versa. Not always, but many times. You should be practicing this so much that anytime a cat comes in the room, the puppy looks to you because you have conditioned that, okay, cat in the room or near the room, if I look at mom or dad, I'm gonna get the greatest reward ever. That is going to set you up for success. And then, I, again, I just follow the cat's lead. If they feel like they wanna come up and meet the puppy, then great. I just make sure I'm there to keep both of them safe. I'm gonna list down below all the tools that made this process easy and how we were able to make my mom's two, one very skittish, one moderately skittish, um, cats and my cat was here during all of this by the way haven for those of you that follow my 15 and a half year old um queen cat and then puppy how we got them all to coexist and mingle and actually play together in just a few short weeks not even that a couple weeks then you can check all the links down below i do want to give a big shout out to door buddy for sponsoring this section of the video i again was the one who found them sought them out a long time ago over a year year and a half ago and bought their products on my own i was like okay this is amazing so big shout out to them you'll have special links down below you'll have special discounts down below if if you want to see my one-step potty training process click the video right here or if you want to see how we potty trained wally in under a week click the video right here and i hope you have a beautiful day Goodbye.